I'm going to tell you about our solar and Tesla Powerwall 2 stats for the month of December 2019. So let's get to it. Hi there, John here. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about my Tesla Powerwall 2 and solar PV installations, my Tesla Model 3 Performance and Hyundai Kona, then start now by subscribing, clicking the notification bell icon so you don't miss any new content. In this video, I was going to do the month end review for December and include the year end review as well. However, thinking about it, I felt that it would be just a little too long and it would make, I don't know, like the film Ben-Hur seem like a short advert break by comparison. Therefore, this video will be about our solar PV and Tesla Powerwall 2 performance for December 2019 only. I will do a separate video which will cover our 12 month performance for our solar PV and Tesla Powerwall 2. And I'll put that in the description once I've uploaded it. It'll be a couple of days so you can have a look at that afterwards, but obviously not before mind. Oh, incidentally, on the 4th of December of this year, 2019, it was the first anniversary of our Powerwall 2. Um, and the video I've just been talking about will cover that in more detail. So how efficient it was, what the stats were, what the performance were, what the costs were, payback time, all that kind of thing. So onwards to December 2019 stats then and our performance. Before I just jump into that actually, um, if you're new here, let me give you a bit of background about our setup. We're based in the UK, in the East Midlands. We have two separate solar PV arrays. We've got a four kilowatt array, which has got a 3.8 kilowatt SMA inverter, which was installed in September 2011. We've got a 2.34 kilowatt array with a 2.2 solar edge inverter, and that was installed in October 2019. This gives us a total of 6.34 on the roof, and at the inverter, a potential six kilowatts, providing they're all um, sort of maxed out. Our array isn't shadowed or shaded, it faces uh, southwest, and it's got a 225 azimuth on a 40 degree inclination. We've got a Tesla Powerwall 2 of a Gateway 1. The Tesla is set on time-based control cost saving mode and we've got a cheap rate tariff of four hours plugged into its configuration. We've got a My Energy Zappy version 1 car charger and we've also got My Energy Eddy to divert excess solar to heat our hot water. We've got a My Energy Hub which allows us to remotely monitor um, the usage via the smart um, phone app. And it also allows us to download latest firmware and monitor system status via the LED hub, the lights on the hub. We've got two MyEnergy Harveys. Uh, these devices have current transformer clamps or CT clamps wired into them. The CT clamps measure the current flow and we've got two Harvey devices because each can accommodate up to three CT clamps. I have four CT clamps, one for the grid, one for each of the two solar arrays, and one for the power wall, hence the need for two Harveys. A brace of Harveys. So let's get into the solar performance. So I'm gonna look at my spreadsheet, which I shall bring up on screen and obviously link a copy down below in the description as normal. So our solar performance for December 2019 was 247 kilowatt hours, which works out at eight kilowatts a day on average. Remember that our November and December totals actually benefited from the second array, which came online, which means that those figures are inflated really compared to the preceding months. If you look at a like for like, then December would have been 155 kilowatt hours of generation from the original four kilowatt array. Our new system added 92 kilowatts to that December total. And that additional 92 figure works out to be 59% of our overall total 247 kilowatts, which um, spookily um, is the same percentage size difference between the new arrays. 
So our new array is 59% the size of the original array. Bread. If we scroll down and have a look at the percentage contribution of solar and the Powerwall 2 to overall self-power. We find that solar contributed just 5% of our self-power total during December, whereas the Powerwall contributed 39%. This means that the power wall charged itself during off-peak cheap rate electricity, which has then been used to power the house during the more expensive peak rate. It managed to do this for 39% of the total month, which actually is pretty good for the middle of winter. By comparison, in the summer months, we were running at about 80 to 90% self-power for most months. The 5% self-power from the solar generation was actually the lowest recorded percentage for the year. And don't forget, that was even with the larger array. So whilst we did manage to generate quite a bit of solar, actually most of it was consumed by the house, which was sort of countered, um, as you'll see in a future chart coming up, by the very large grid consumption that we had in December. In fact, it was the highest of any month of the year to date. So, I guess what you gain on the swings, you tend to lose on the roundabouts, as they say. It certainly was the case here for us. So staying with self-power, let's just have a look down here. Here we go at this chart. Let's have a look at the self-performance split over the peak and off-peak period times. If you remember, our off-peak is a four-hour period from half past 12 to half past four in the early hours of the morning. And our peak period is the remaining 20 hours of the day. In December, we were self-powered for 74% of that peak period, meaning we didn't pull from the grid for 74% of the time when the prices of electricity are more expensive. Power was either supplied by the power wall, mainly, with a little top up from the solar contribution. During the off-peak period, we had no self-power, which means we pulled from the grid 100% of the time during, that, during the month. Which sort of makes sense, really. This would have been the times when we were charging the electric cars, the power wall was charging itself, we ran the dishwasher, the kilns in the glass studio would have been on, the washer machine and tumble dryer would put on timers to come on on that time. It basically means that we'd have maximized the use of the off-peak cheaper rate by putting all of those things on timer. So let's move on and have a look at our power wall in and out. There we go. So in December, we put 512 kilowatt hours into the power wall and extracted 455 kilowatt hours, which leads to an efficiency of 89%. Tesla quote a round trip efficiency for the Powerwall at 92.5%, so we're slightly below that. And if you look at the year-end video that I'm just about to do, you'll see what our overall year-end performance round trip was. And let's have a look at the next tab. So this tab tracks year on year from December 2011 to December 2019. As you can see, December 2019 had the highest solar production at 247 kilowatts of any previous year. However, if you recall, this figure is the total of the two arrays which came online on the 1st of November. So I guess it's not that surprising. It is the first month where we've had both arrays comparing against December. Light for light production would have been 155 which actually is still very good for December. It would have made it the third highest month over the previous nine years that I've been recording the data. Nine years, crikey, that's a long time to daily record into a spreadsheet. <laughs> How committed I am, or should I be committed? Let's move on and have a look at the day by day. So the day by day for December 2019, this actually makes very interesting viewing. You can see where all the usage is happening. We track four data sets here, or four data inputs. We've got the home usage is shown in blue. Solar generation is shown in yellow. Export to the grid is in orange and import from the grid is in red. And as you can see, there's some major spikes of blue and red 
and these days we would have consumed lots of electricity mainly supplied from the grid, denoted by those red columns. And as you know, the majority of this would have been during our off-peak cheap rate electricity. The chart there doesn't indicate whether it's off-peak or um, peak rate, but I can guarantee it'll be off-peak. If you look at the yellow columns, they are a little dismal. That's our solar. We've got no days over 20 kilowatts at all during the month. And most days were actually under 10 kilowatt. Well, actually 21 of the 31 are under 10 kilowatt. So not great over the course of the month. There were two days where we only generated 400 watts from our 6.34 kilowatt array. So phenomenal. So I guess you could look at it from a positive that even on really dull, grey, rainy days, you still generate some electricity. But 400 watts um, you know, isn't that much. Not to keep the lights on, probably. Let's have a look at our monthly average grid usage. This chart tracks the daily average grid and house usage for the month. The top blue line is the house usage and the bottom line is what we pulled from the grid. So in December, on average, we pulled 41.9 kilowatts from the grid each day. And if you think about that, 14 kilowatts of that total would have been sent straight to the power wall each day because that charged 100% during our off-peak rate every single day in December. And the remaining 27.9 kilowatts would have been things like car charging, running the kilns, the electric heater uh, in the glass studio, cooking, washing machine, tumble dryer, dishwasher, etc. all those normal sort of, sort of things. And if we move along and have a look at the monthly grid usage, two charts here. The first chart looks at the amount of energy exported to the grid. Ideally, I try and keep this as low as possible. And in December 2019, we exported 33.9, almost 34 kilowatts to the grid, which seen in isolation seems a little bit disappointing comparing it to the other months. But there is a bit of a backstory to this. In November, our Zappi car charger died and it was indicated a hardware fault. And my energy were very good about it and confirmed it needed to be replaced. It was still under warranty, just being under the 12 months old. And they, without quibble, dispatched a new one and arranged to collect the old one once the new one had been installed. However, what it did mean is we were without the Zappi car charger for about three to four weeks by the time all of this had happened and the new ones was installed. And what this meant that we were charging both cars on granny plugs via a 13 amp three pin plug. And this obviously had a knock on effect because we were not able to benefit from diverting the 33 kilowatts that we sent out as in excess solar. We couldn't use that to power the cars because the, the Zappi wasn't there, so it couldn't then be set on Eco++ mode to pick up on any excess solar. Nor could we make really effective use of the four hour off peak cheap rate time because we actually got very little charge into the cars in that four hours. So they generally had to be on all the time to, to charge on the trickle charge from the, the granny chargers. Did you have any issues or opportunities within December 2019? So if you did, just let me know in the comments below what worked for you, what didn't work for you, what issues, what problems, what did you encounter? <laughs> if we scroll down to our last chart, which is our monthly pull from the grid, as you can see here in December 2019, we had a really large pull from the grid, as indicated earlier, almost 1300 kilowatt hours. Thankfully, most of this would have been from the cheaper rate, so the off-peak rate at five pence per kilowatt, which actually works out at around 65 pence, 65 pence, that'd be nice, 65 pounds for the month, so 13 times five pence, as opposed to 169 pounds at the peak rate of 13 pence per kilowatt. And because of the issues I had with the Zappi swap out which meant losing the historic data on the faulty device 
and configuration changes with the my energy components, I've actually not recorded the month end data for the electric car charging or the hot water charging. And I've got to say, I find this the worst aspect of the My Energy system. I love the products and I love what they do, but trying to view historic data is just horrendous. I know lots of people moan about it, and I seem to moan about it on every month end video. But, um, you know, looking at the on day data is absolutely fine, but looking back is tedious. Firstly, it requires you to actually remember to actually do it before we roll over to a new month and the previous month is wiped. Secondly, you have to physically go to the unit, to the eddy or to the zappy, and manually record the data from the screen, which often results in me not remembering to do it and or can't be bothered to do it. So I've decided from there on not to bother recording that data set and uh, just rely on the data sets that I currently do record uh, easily. So that was my December. How was your December? What worked well for you in 2019? What were your stats? What were your highs? What were your lows? Do tell and drop them in the comments below. So thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. So for now, take care. Bye.